want to make this video to kind of explain uh, everything with the Dermamatch pigments and also the difference between ink and pigment and what's out there, what people are using, and what makes Dermamatch pigments different. Dermamatch pigments have been tested in warm light, outside light, sunlight, shade, fluorescence, um, all, all sorts of lighting conditions. So that's, that's how the pigments have gotten to where they're at. Um, and the only way to really test that is to do it in your own actual skin. So my knees are covered um, in, pig, in inks and pigments from all over the internet. I've, I've bought the most expensive and the cheapest, just trying to figure out, you know, when, back when I was trying to get this formula just right, I was, I was trying everything that was out there and nothing was good enough. And so that's why I had to start uh, making our own formula for Dermamesh specifically so that we were giving the best results for our clients. Now if you look here on my knee, I have on my left knee here, I have a whole bunch of very faded ones from about anywhere from 10 to 12 years ago and then I have some newer ones. Um, all the black ones you see that they all have this bluish hue now on both my knees and, and some of these are, are very expensive ones like I said and some are cheaper. I think the difference is just that some are more watered down so they faded faster but they all fade to this bluish hue after a while. Uh, you see I have this kind of color swatch of various uh, pigments that I've tried, uh, most of which turn to a blue or a purple because they put some brown in there um, to make like a dark brown. So none, none of these really stood the test. On, on the far right here is, is the pigment that uh, I eventually developed and started using uh, about 12 years ago. So this this is the pigment B on top and the pigment M right underneath it. Uh, and a formula that I, that I started playing around with about eight and a half years ago is over here on my left knee. Um, if you look at the, the far left right here, it's uh, this is the black tattoo ink that was used. And you see it, part of uh, Telltale telltale sign that it is uh, tattooing because it kind of spreads. You see it's, it's not just the points that look bluish, it's everything in between. And this was a, this was a pure black. Uh, and that's what happens with pure black inks and pigments is that they, they end up looking uh, dark blue like this. Uh, just next to it though, this is the Derma Mesh Pigments. This is pigment B uh, of our newest formula that's been released. Uh, the, the pigments stay sharp. This is about eight and a half years old and they stay sharp. You see some are faded, um, but the, the still the edges are sharp because the uh, the actual size of the particles and the pigments uh, are just above what a uh, skin cell is, so that they don't really migrate in the skin at all. And they don't get pushed out of the skin like, uh, like a splinter would. And you see the, the difference here is that it doesn't have the bluish hues, because there's more warming tones in here, and they, they, they've stayed with it this entire time. Part of understanding the difference between ink and pigment is uh, there's some biology there. There's a lot of history there too. I mean, uh, inks, tattoos have been around since, as far as we know, almost 5,000 years ago. Uh, and that's just a matter of the black tattoo, at least, is carbon and water, you know, charcoal, or uh, you know, it's iron oxide and water. Um, these are used to make these dark, these dark colors. Uh, but the thing about carbon is it's so fine, it, it acts like an ink. The particles are so small and fine grain that they do spread. Pigments are larger particles and that's why they settle. If you ever see a bottle of pigment, it's always going to settle, so you have to shake it up. Uh, and then ink is homogenous, it never settles, it's just free floating in the water. It's just as light as the water, the particle sizes are so small. Um, which is great for creating a lot of density in an area, but those each spread because it's such small particle, watered down carbon. And pigment itself can be too thick. Um, so where it'll fade too fast, uh, it'll get treated like a, a splinter does and gets pushed out of the skin. So with Dermamash we found this uh, equilibrium where it was just bigger than skin cells, uh, but smaller than a, a, a large particle pigment like a splinter that would get pushed out of the skin. Uh, so ours sits at about 60 microns, which is micro, uh, 60 micrometers, and I found that that is what looks the best and lasts the longest, and is, uh, gives you the richest color immediately. When people buy the pigment, sometimes they ask, like, why is this brown? I, this is supposed to be for black hair. Well, because if it didn't have any brown in it whatsoever, if it didn't have any warming tones like that, it would look blue in the skin. And my knees are proof of that. I mean, I've tried, 
every single, I've got every single type of ink. I've tried everything. All the stuff that you can buy online, pigments, black, uh, tattoo, black tattoo inks, uh, eyebrow stuff. It's all, it all turns either dark blue or dark purple. So I wouldn't recommend any of it. Um, if you are, anyone that gets this done, look at the, the ink that they're using or the pigment. If it's anything that looks like it's just pure black, uh, it's going to have the, the outcomes that you see on my knees. It ends up looking kind of bluish. What ends up happening to inks and pigments in the skin is different than what would happen on a paper towel or drops in water. Uh, there's, the, the effects are similar to why your veins that have dark red blood in them actually look blue, or why bruises look blue in the skin, or why someone that's fallen into asphalt, uh, that's pure black street asphalt, looks blue in the skin as well. Anything black looks blue at that layer through the skin. Um, this has to do with hemoglobins in the skin. Uh, it, the, the science behind it doesn't really matter. The fact remains that pure black looks blue in the skin. So just don't do it. This problem of black and dark brown pigments and inks turning blue or purple has been around for a long time. Uh, so why all of a sudden would Dermamatch have a solution that no one else has come up with before? Well, that has to do with the, the nature of capitalism. You don't come up with a, a fix. You don't go back to formula. You come up with a, a Band-Aid fix or a patch fix because it's the best way to make money. Uh, a tattoo artist that does someone's you know, big dragon on their back, once that starts to get a little bit blurry, they go through and they do another a job on it. And that can last a, a long time because they're going way deeper in the skin. When you're going these light layers like, like we are and what permanent makeup artists do, those blue tones come out a lot sooner. So that's a solution for tattoo. And in the permanent makeup world, they sell uh, warming type stuff like this. It's, it's always orange um, to correct it when uh, black eyebrows turn blue. Um, and, and so they're selling more stuff. That's their solution is to, to another, another Band-Aid fix. Uh, with scalp pigmentation, all these you know, thousands of tiny points, you can't go and warm every single little point, uh, especially if it's spread, like when someone uses tattoo ink. Um, so this is a new problem and therefore requires a new solution. Um, and it can't be one where Dermamatch there's, you know, gives you black ink and then sells you warming stuff because, like I said, it would be very, very difficult to go through and, and hit every single point with a warming tone. Uh, the solution, it seems pretty obvious to me, why don't you just build the warming tones into the pigment themselves? Um, part of the problem with that is that if you don't have the same exact pigment uh, particle size, the, the warming effect may leave sooner than the actual uh, you know, color of pigment that you put into the skin. So you have to make sure they're the same particle size. And that's what we've done. The, the, the warming uh, tones in the pigment are the same particle size as the darkening ones. So the dark brown color that you see uh, in the pigment C and the pigment M, and even the pigment B, the, the, the darkest that we have, still has some brown tones in it. That's, that's the warming effect in there. If you don't have any browns whatsoever in there, it will look blue. So it's really pointless to do any sort of test on paper towels or uh, drops in water because that will look black. That will look pure black because that's not that's not what's in question here. Black is how black it is doesn't matter. What matters is what it looks like through the skin, and my knees are evidence of that. And for anyone out there looking to get this done, um, I'm not saying you have to go to some place that sells Dermamesh stuff. Just if you go somewhere, just make sure that the, the the ink that they're using isn't a pure black because if it's pure black it will look blue. So um, yeah, just be careful out there and make sure you're going with an, an experienced artist too because you can go too deep or too light and it can have different effects uh, with that. When I've seen somebody uh, come in when they've gone somewhere else and they want me to do some sort of corrective work, they think I can do some sort of warming tones like that, but I really can't. I can do like my pigment C, which will has a lot more of the warming effect. Um, that's if I think it's even doable. Sometimes I have to tell them, look, you gotta go. Uh, somewhere else to get it lasered out first and then come back to me so I can have a clean canvas here. Um, yeah, I, I've taken pictures of some of the people um, and here's some examples of them. Um, you can see this, this, this was, whoever did this did use a pure black ink because I talked to them about it, they, I asked questions, they said yeah it looked like a black ink. Um, 
So yeah, if you do, if you don't want yourself or your clients to look like this guy or this guy or this guy, this guy or this guy, uh, you're gonna want to make sure that the pigment itself has warming tones in it already. Um, a lot of this information can be found on the dermamatch-products.com website. Um, so you can go on there and find uh, more details on our pigments. Uh, if you have any questions, you can write to info at dermamatch.com or call the number on our website and we'll be happy to uh, answer any questions for you.